Okay, well, we have a, uh, a segment now. It's mm -hmm. uh, a fun one. It's called If You Only Knew. Let's do it. All right. Your first car. Uh, uh, Volvo, just a 1978 Volvo station wagon, 245DL. A cool. beast. That was a great car. That's pretty sweet. Uh, funniest or strangest fan encounter? There is a, a woman who has Jamie Heineman and my face tattooed on one of her thighs. Ah. And she, she also has Hugh Laurie's face on the other okay. leg. Interesting. So I think it's a skeptical matchup. I think she's into the critical thinkers. Uh huh. Yeah. That's that's that that must be strange. It was you peculiar know. to think. Of, uh, yeah. I. I. Yeah. Your favorite movie? There's at least five movies in my in my favorite movie list. Um, but among them would be the original Star Wars, Blade Runner, Alien, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So is that just incredible to work on the Star Wars movie? It was, yeah. except when I watched it. Okay. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of episodes one and two. Oh, uh, I see. However, working on them with that team mm -hmm. uh, and working with the art direction team and Doug Chang, and I actually even got to have a couple of meetings with George, that was like dying and going to heaven. Yeah. Without a doubt. So cool. Three things you would bring with you to a deserted island. Uh, a Leatherman multi-tool. Uh-huh. Um, a, um, some type of bag for storing water. Yeah. And a spoon. A spoon? A spoon. I suppose I could make a spoon with a <laughs> yeah. What else would I, oh, no, 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 like, I, let's say 500 feet of rope. Yeah, 500 feet of rope. Okay. Sure, if that's my list. You can make anything with that. Yeah. You're kind of like MacGyver. I, hopefully. Did you love the show MacGyver? I did. <laughs> I actually almost got hired to be the technical consultant on the new MacGyver show, which, again, would have been a dream come true. I love that show. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken? The one that comes to mind is there was a point at which I was uh, in the early aughts. I was, no, in the late 90s, I was working on the movie Bicentennial Man, and it wasn't a good shoot, and I wasn't having a good time, and I wanted to quit that job in order to be available for another job that hasn't, hadn't been guaranteed to me. Mm -hmm. And I had six-month-old twin boys. And my then wife and I talked about it, and we agreed that I should try and I should quit this job to be available for this other job, and it was terrifying. Oh, okay, yeah. And I did get that other job. Uh, this is a, a real life risk. That was a life risk. I thought risk. it was going to involve some sort of TNT or. No. <laughs> <laughs> there were certainly things like that, but when I think about the like standing on that precipice, feeling like mm -hmm. I'm not sure how this is going to go, that was one of those key moments. Mm -hmm. Your proudest accomplishment? My kids. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, my, I have twin boys, they're 20 years old, and I, I love them, and they drive me crazy, and they're amazing, and yeah. Are they gonna follow in your footsteps? No, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, one is a cook, and one is off to uh, college in the fall uh, in music, film, and television production. Okay. So, so plausibly uh, yeah. entertainment adjacent. Your know? father was uh, in the show business as well, yeah. right? Yeah. Worked on they, Sesame I mean, they, Street and The Electric Company. My Yes. Remember The Electric Company? I love The Electric Company. <sighs> Morgan Freeman was on that. Oh, the Easy Reader. <laughs> um, yeah, so my and You father, were on Sesame Street. I was. My, father ra my father's one of the very first animators hired to do some of those animated interstitials on Sesame Street. And so I grew up doing voiceovers for him for like circles pushing squares uphill and yeah. all those little... I remember that. Yeah. You were the voice in... Circus I, I was one of the... Yeah, it was like 10, 12 year old me doing that. That's so cool. What's the uh, best advice you've ever received? I was uh, early on in working in special effects. Uh, I was working with my mentor, a guy named Mitch Romanowski, who ran the shop for... He ran the model shop for Nightmare Before Christmas, which was an, in, an incredible production. And Mitch taught me a huge amount about what I know. And we were pulling an all-nighter uh, to do this Super Bowl commercial the next day. And it's 4 a.m., we've been up for like 40 hours, and we're sitting there like chain-smoking in this shop, trying to get this thing done, and he turns to me and he goes, you know what, about this time, you get really philosophical about this crap, because it really doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're gonna try and get it done, but if it doesn't, no one's gonna die. Right, right. Yeah. And in the midst of this feverish, crazy activity, to have him reset the, yeah. the level of what was important, that has st stuck with me for my whole life since then. Yeah, it seems like you have to be able to not take things too seriously and main to maintain your kind of your attitude that you have on the yeah. show is so fun and uplifting. You, if you're worried about everything all the time, that's not going to work. Well, and you, you, understanding what the stakes really are, because they don't always feel like they're not life and death. 
but to realize when they are and when they aren't, that's a, a nice, it was a really great perspective he gave me. Uh, something people would be surprised to learn about you. Uh, I ride a six foot unicycle. Ah. Hello, uh -huh. ladies. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you still do that? I occasionally, yeah. I taught myself to ride a unicycle when I was 15. Yeah. Uh, and I rode it very seriously. Like I used to, I, I, I was at NYU pretending to go there for about six months and I've spent a lot of time in Washington Square um, using my unicycle to jump up and down those stairs in the fountain during the winter yeah. when the fountain was off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how I learned to go up and down stairs on a unicycle. Something that we should be all paying more attention to. As a society. Um, each other's experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I, we're in a very difficult period right now. Uh, whatever your politics are, I think are, we're in a difficult period. And I'm personally afraid, and I'm not sure that we're going to make it out of this period. But if we do, I believe it will be because we have learned to listen to each other and understand each other's experiences. And what I mean by that is there are people that you know, if you're listening to this, there are people that interact with other people every day and not, they don't realize that those people live in fundamentally different Americas than they do. Mm -hmm. That someone who's in a wheelchair is not someone just like us who happens to have wheels. They live in a world with a totally different set of rules and challenges that are almost impossible for someone who's not in a wheelchair to conceive of. Uh, and all sorts of people of different colors and faiths and genders live in different Americas. Uh, and the more we're able to see each other's experience, the better we'll be able to take care of each other. You think we've become too selfish? I think we've become too separated. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure if it's selfishness, uh, but I do know, I mean, I do know that these things, as addicted as I am to them, are super isolating. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they pull us apart in ways that aren't useful. They polarize us. Uh, they prioritize polarization mm -hmm. because that makes more money for their corporate masters, and that's bad. I'll leave mine in the car. Do you? Yeah, mine's in the car right now. That's really smart. Yeah, just because I can't stop looking at it. Yeah. It's hurting my eyes. Yeah. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.